Sweetheart.
and we are live from kingston jamaica it's a rainy rainy evening in ja but we here we here welcome welcome everyone it's another day another wednesday another stream it's your boy java slash mortarian we are live welcome welcome to everyone um to charlie uni i'm soon tell you how the cat learned for drive yes folks crazy stuff going on in ja so um we're coming back with another episode of a very attorney however um i'm gonna have to redo a specific section of chapter well episode three um as i was saying last stream um uh, my pc crashed caught a nasty virus so unfortunately i was not able to recover the save data from it for a very attorney weird thing though <coughs> i was able to recover my save data for my other games but i don't know steam must have something against a very attorney any who's we're gonna continue um i won't do all of episode three i'm just gonna start back from the court session the entire court proceedings of episode three because while going back through, running back through, it had a nice little twist that I believe you guys will love. So, that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so, we're gonna go load a previous day, and we're gonna first trial of Prince One. Um, so, I'm gonna need Severin to come in this. So let me just been here this entire time, brother. I know. What's up? What's up? What's up? All right. So we're just gonna go through the first trial session. Um, for those of you who may be new to the channel, um, Severin is voiced by our resident streamer, Living Kaiser. Yo, yo. Cause of course, Severin is a chicken. All right. A semi new day. Court. Once again, Falcon and Sparrison find themselves waiting outside the doors of the tribunal, the Grand Distance. Are you feeling nervous, Sparrison, Falcon? Uh, nope. Actually, well, I think are we going to redo it the way that you did it last time? It might change because I, I I just do these things one shot, so it might change. Okay. It's gonna change, trust me. <clears throat> Actually, I think we might have a handle on this case. All the pieces are coming together nicely. Awesome! Let's demolish that pompous prosecutor with walls of evidence. Senor Falco, I trust everything is in order? Absolutely. I have every intention of bringing the truth to light in this trial. Ah, such confidence. That's magnificent to see. And bringing the truth to light, you say? An admirable goal? No more jousting at imaginary giants? You wanna shut in the mouth? Door home. Here we go. Hands down, best director. <laughs> Buena suerte, Senor Falcon. We will. Are we ready? We're ready. To battle. JJ. Severin. Nervous. Why would I be nervous? I'm not nervous. I'm as calm as a cuckoo. You're the nervous one. This whole courtroom is nervous. <sighs> Whoa, cool your feathers, Falcon. <laughs> Terrible. You can't even maintain a stoic facade. I thought this trial would be perfect opportunity for you to redeem your previous embarrassments. But if this is how you're going to act before the trial has even started... Why, you pompous tail posture perfect! 
Order. Order. Let's all settle down. Court is now in session. <laughs> Psst. Fuck on. What is it? Is it me? Or does the primary judge look hairier today? That's such a different judge to the one who res resided over Dame Catalan's trial, you doofus. <laughs> oh, still. It's a little strange, isn't it? It is. Let's just check one sec. We're good. Yeah. Ah. Hold up. There we go. It is a little, I suppose. Excuse me, Your Honor. I was under the impression that Judge Maxim would be residing over this case. Uh, where is he? Judge Maxim has gone on temporary <laughs> sickly due to a terrible accident with a flight of stairs. <laughs> but rest assured, Assyrs, Assyrs, Prosecutor, Defense, and members of the jury, that I am more than qualified to fill his shoes. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get the show on the way. This is the trial of Prince Juan Creredo, who stands accused of murdering Major Howell and of conspiracy to murder the king himself. Roll call! The defense is present and ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Good. Very good. I expect this to be a nice, speedy trial. I do not want to see this. Dragged out by technicalities and bureaucracy. Well said, Your Honor. I expect that once the court sees overwhelming evidence, this trial will be over in five minutes. For f five minutes? Mon do. You're just messing with their head, Falcon. Keep it together. So we're all on the same page. Excellent. Prosecutor, please call your first witness to the stand. Very well. I call the police officer who investigated the crime scene. I call him up. I say I call upon Inspector Jose Voltieri. Vol Volerti. Stand up to the step up to the standing inspector. Recite the oath. Uh, yes, yeah, I was this person as well. I swear to speak without hatred and without fear, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please recite your name and occupation for the court record. Um, my name is Justi, just, uh, Volt, Volerti. Uh, I am a servant to the law, a uh, scourge of the gutter rats. That will do, Inspector. We've all heard your monologue before. Whoa! Kokoriko is really is going for a speed record, isn't he? <laughs> now, can you tell us what you witnessed on the morning of the 7th of January? Of, co of course. At 10 o'clock um, in the morning, I was called to the Lavoie um, Grand Galerie by one of the king's royal guards. D did he just say a clock? Uh, there I saw Prince Juan kill Luis Felipe the corpse of Major Howell with a rose in hand and around two dozen citizens. Wait, hold up. Let me, let me, let me tone down the music a bit. Just say so it doesn't overpower our voices too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The citizens and the king himself all attest to seeing Major Howell taking the rose from Prince Juan's hand and then promptly dropping dead. And what did the morgue uncover upon examination of the corpse? The coroner um, determined with absolute certainty, 100% fact, that Major Howell died of poisoning. Aside from a prick upon the finger, aside from a prick upon the finger, 
One was no, there was no sign of external harm to Major Hull's body. Therefore, the poisoned rose must have been the cause of death. Putting the pieces together, that, would, that does seem very implicative of the prince. Uh, I have no further questions. Damn. I was hoping that the coroner's report would determine that the guy died from a freak heart attack or something. Uh, that would make for a particularly speedy trial, wouldn't it? But no, we aren't so lucky. Something else must be amiss in the old bird's testimony. Right, I'll tear it apart. Your Honor, I wish to examine the cross examine the witness. Falcon, wasn't it? Don't waste the court's time. A high-ranking police officer would never lie on the witness stand. I wouldn't accuse the inspector of lying. I just want to make sure that every base is properly covered. Ugh. This sounds like pointless nitpicking to me. But I allow it. For now. Go on, Falcon. Do your cross-examination. All right, let's see. He's a clucky cluck cluck. Um, let's. Yes, yes, I am. I'm a fucking chicken. <laughs> oh man, dear inspector, why would you say such a thing? Expletive is not well received. No, you're not. Yes, uh -huh. I was. Dinner earlier today. Nonetheless, Inspector, you say that the coroner determined with certainty that the Major Howe was killed by poison. Is that right? Correct. Um, he stated the signs and symptoms were a textbook. There is no possibility that his death was natural. Hmm. Well then, um, may I ask? Did the coroner mention specifically what kind of poison it was? Um, he was not certain. At first, the coroner put, um, sorry. Why am I blanking on this word? Take your time. Posted? Posited. Posited. Yes. That's very weird. Where have I ever seen this word? And I don't know why I'm, why I'm suddenly blanking on this word. Anyway. <laughs> At first, the coroner posited that it was a plant-borne poison, like that of the aconite flower. What? This is our new dialogue. That's why I said it's a twist. When he learned how fast the poison had taken effect, he noted that this was atypical of aconite. Consequently, he suggested that it may have been some newly engineered concoction a newly engineered poison you say well that only reaffirms that this was a very deliberate assassination attempt indeed do i have an another question of course i do i'm just getting started so how exactly was major hole poisoned what was the delivery mechanism? His finger was pricked by the poison rose. The poison rose. Um, he even commented out loud about it seconds before dying. All 22 citizens who witnessed the murder attested to seeing and hearing this. Is there any possibility that he was poisoned by something else? That's an absurd thing to ask, JJ. You just heard the 22 people saw the victim prick his finger and die. What are you suggesting? That the pricked finger had no relation to the poisoning? But that is exactly what I'm saying. I do not doubt that Major Hall was poisoned, but I do doubt that the rose was the cause. Unbelievable. Only a thought of a fool would fail to draw the blatant link here. JJ, as tempting as it is, as tempting as it is to sit here and lecture you on the basics, the basics of cause and effect, 
I'll end this discussion painlessly. Inspector, please tell the defense that you found traces of poison on the thorns of the rose itself. That should alleviate all doubt that the rose was, in fact, the poison delivery mechanism. Um, well, actually, I can't tell him that. <sighs> I dread to ask, why not? Um, well, we didn't check the rose for traces of poison. Um, it just seemed obvious that the rose was caused the poison, giving the time of the incident. <sighs> well then, now would be good time to make a test. Here's a marvelous thought. We prick the finger of the defendant with the rose. If there is no poison on the rose, then Prince Juan lives, and he is free to go. If the rose is poisoned, then the prince dies, but that's okay, because the punishment would have been would be just as fitting of the crime. A marvelous suggestion, prosecutor. What is this? A witch trial? This isn't America Severin. That's not how we do things here. On the contrary, calm your feathers, JJ. That was clear that it was clearly a joke. There are far more humane ways of testing poison. I'm sure the inspector will perform his duty with due diligence. Um, actually, we won't be able to test the rose for poison at all. Why is that? Um, given the nature, the dangerous nature of the flower, it was um, well destroyed by the police force. We burned it to ashes. Such unprofessionalism. If we have no way of knowing whether the rose was poisoned, then this whole trial ought to be called into question. Nice try, JJ. But through the process of reasoning by elimination, we can still deduce that with absolute certainty that the rose was poisoned. In other words, there was nothing else at the crime scene that could have acute that could have caused this poisoning. Wrong. There actually was something else at the crime scene that could have contained the poison. Something the investigative police blindly overlooked. And I'll show you right here and now. Take a look at this. Nani. What am I supposed to be looking at? <laughs> I'm sorry, Nani. Taste the paper wrapper from to a piece of chocolate. It was found in the Lavoie, the Sae du Tibre to be precise, and we can date his consumption to the day of the incident. You're not suggesting. <laughs> I am. That Major Howell ate a piece of poison chocolate moments before he died? Oh, I most certainly am, you cockerico. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, give it up for the bird. Did you see this wrap out the crime scene for yourself, Inspector? Um, well, the police force does not have the time nor the resources to throw all every piece of trash at the very crime scene, I'm afraid. In other words, you overlooked it. Astounding unprofessionalism. The prosecution is right to be disgusted. What a disgraceful display. Inspector. Um, I offer my apologies, Your Honor. I do not want your apologies. I want you to do your damn job properly. Ah, vanity, sir. Get off the witness podium before I kick you off myself. Do you? As you wish. I'll take my leave. Until next time, this yours. So let me get this straight. This 
chocolate wrapper was found at the crime scene. Correct. And you have reason to believe that it was consumed on the day of the incident? That's right. I do. I have, a f- I have an expert food tasting witness who is willing to testify, <laughs> if need be. You have a foodie witness? I don't recall anything, anyone like that. Who on earth are you talking about, Falcon? Oh, oh, I see. I got you. <laughs> but do you know for certain that Major Hall consumed this chocolate? Well, uh, you see, that is a fact that we are still um, investigating. I see. And do you have evidence that this chocolate was in fact poison? Again, um, that is something that may require a little more time to definitely approve. So then in actuality, you do not have evidence that Major Hall consumed some poison chocolate. Instead, you have a solitary piece of rubbish that you plucked straight out of the gutter. That's weak, even for you, JJ. You bastard. Let's move things along. I have another witness I would like to summon. The man who claims to have had an excellent view of people going in and out of the of the Davoa at this at the time of the incident. I call upon Monsieur Toussaint Kingley. Could a witness please approach the stand and recite the oath? Hello, 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 hello. All oh, right, the oath. Uh, I swear to speak without hatred and without fear, to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me. All oh, right, this is France. Please state your full name and occupation for the court record. My name is Toussaint Kingley, and I'm a person who fishes. A person who fishes. So you are a fisherman? Oh! Oh! So is that how it is? I thought the French justice system was better than this. I beg your pardon. Here comes Toussaint Kingley, the kingfisher. Yo, Mark. Yo! Hey, the brother here, top boy, my kingfisher. I don't tell boy that. Don't you find true, hey boy, move your butt. Hey. Clearly, he must be a fisherman. Because, didn't you hear? All kingfishers are fishermen. Well, you are carrying a fishing rod. And, and, can a man not carry a fishing rod, reel, and bait without being branded a fisherman? All this alliteration. Look! Look! The prosecutor is carrying a riding crop. Clearly he must be a horse jockey. Oh, for pity's sake, fine, fine. You can list the occupation as a person who fishes and not a fisherman. Thank you! Actually, why do you carry a riding crop, Severin? I've never seen you ride a horse. Can't you can even ride horses? I don't know, JJ. Why Why do you, a 30-something-year-old with no health problems, carry around a crane? A cane? This is veering quite far, of course. <sighs> Could the prosecution please get back to his questions? Of course, Your yeah, Honor. Monsieur King, Kingley. Is it true that you were nearby the Lavoie at the time of the incident? Oh yes! I was sitting upon the railing of Pond the Arts! Wonderful. The Pond the Arts? That's the new bridge that was just a stone's throw from the Lavoie south entrance, correct? 
That's right. And what were you doing at the time of the incident? I was fishing. Oh, of course. <laughs> King fishes. Am I right, Falcon? So, you would have had plenty of opportunity to see the people who entered and exited the palace. Could Can you tell us who you saw? Well, the Lavoie is a busy place. Naturally, I saw a lot of people. But at 9 a.m. I saw the king, Louis Philippe himself, enter the building. Uh, he was surrounded by his entourage, of course. Then, around 9.30 a.m., I saw this shifty-looking fox lurking around the entrance. Your Honor, I object to this witness's use of the term shifty-looking. It's but a blatant, vague, and biased description. No, really! The brother looks shady! I saw him rubbing his paws and cackling gleefully like this. <laughs> and then I saw him take out a rose and carefully rub the stem. Rub the stem of a rose, you say? As if he were applying something to the flower, perhaps? Well, Monsieur, I really shouldn't speculate. Of course, it would be wrong of me to ask such a leading question. Uh, uh, but yeah, it definitely looked like he was putting some sort of powder in the stem. Wow, even I wasn't expecting such a bold admission. Lie like. Members of the court. It sounds like what we have here is a, is a direct witnessing of the defendant read, read, sorry, reading the murder weapon. The defense claims that the rose was never poisoned, and yet here we have a man who saw the poison with his own eyes. I smell perjury. You do? No question. He saw a shifty looking and criminal reading a poison and cackling near the scene of a crime. That's not believable at all. I think you might be right. I wonder if I have any evidence that calls to Son's story into doubt. Your Honor, I would like to cross examine the witness. Really? This nonsense again? You just heard the witness directly describe your client reading poison on a rose. What is there to question? I'm just trying to cover the, uncover the truth, Your Honor. <sighs> oh. Fine. Do your thing. Go on, Falcon. Go make a fool of yourself. This man looks like he's about to rip me to shreds. But we must proceed. Uh, just to show cockery for once and for all. Okay. Let's see. On the river, upon the bank, maybe. King of his entourage, eh? Yeah. Shifty looking fox. Well, I mean, he kind of does look a bit shifty, but eh. Yeah. Applying some sort of powder. Ooh la la. Alright, let's start with here. <clears throat> Monsieur Kingley, you say that you were sitting upon the railings of Pond River, Pond River, on the morning of the incident? Yeah. Hmm. Monsieur Kingley, you had a good view of the Lavoie South entrance, didn't you? Yep. The Panda River is a great vantage point for seeing the Grand Galliere's South Side. What about the other entrances? The other entrances? You mean like if you were entering from the Tulia Gardens or the Place du Carousel? No, I possibly couldn't see those areas from the bridge. But of course, that isn't relevant. Monsieur Kingley witnessed Prince Juan entering the south entrance with the flower in hand, and that's what counts. But, food for thought. What if Prince Juan didn't enter from the south entrance? What if he approached the Lavoie from, let's say, 
to Leah Gardens, to Leah Gardens, to the West. <sighs> That's a big what if. Do you have any evidence that Prince Juan entered the Lavar from the Tulia Gardens? As a matter of fact, yes, I do. I have definite proof that Prince Juan approached from the west is not the south. Hey, I know what I saw, Monsieur. I'm doubtful too. Go on, JJ, show us the definitive proof that Prince Juan entered from the Lavar from the Tulia's Gardens. Sure, I'm gonna do it. I'll show this a classic piece of literature. Take a look at this. A book page. Page 44 of Don Quixote. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Of Don Quixote, specifically. It was found just outside the Lavoie's west entrance. This proves nothing. Oh, I'm not done yet. Take a look at these. Don Quixote. This is the book Prince Juan has been reading in jail since his arrest. I believe he has had it on his person for some time. Ah, yes. Page 44 is missing. That was the first thing I checked for your information. You do realize what this means, don't you, Seven? The defendant was present in Tulier Gardens prior to Anthony Lavoie. This also means that in all likelihood, haha, that the defendant entered the Lavoie from the west entrance, not the south. He could not have possibly seen, have been seen by Monsieur Kingley from the Pond de Bank. Uh, what? I know what I saw, Monsieur. I find theory, Falcon. But maybe the defendant took the long way around. One can still travel from the Tullieries to the Lavoie's south entrance by walking along the river. An, ex an extra two kilometers of walking just to enjoy the pre-murder scenery? Let's not say such silly things, Kakariko. You're better than this. Okay. Maybe the defendant deliberately left the page there to mislead the investigation. Now you're the one who's blindly speculating, Severin. It, it's not blind speculation. It's a viable hypothesis. You are fond of logic, aren't you, Kokoriko? Let's talk about Occam's razor, for example. When torn between two seemingly equal hypotheses, we must side with one with the one that imposes the fewest assumptions. You're a smart man, you know this. Which of these theory takes fewer assumptions? Tell me. One. The page from Prince Juan's book fell out of his way to the Lavoie South entrance. Two. Prince Juan deliberately planted the page on the off chance that it would be discovered. Then he took the long way around. How dare you! How dare you! Nerve you to lecture me on such basic philosophical concepts! I'll stop lecturing you when you stop making such basic mistakes, Severin! Monsieur Falcon! Please calm yourself! What is the point of all this yammering? How dare you! The ultimate point is that Toussaint's testimony is fabricating, made up, utter bullcrap. Shit. <laughs> No! Everything I've said is the truth! I suspect the wit that witness isn't even a fisherman. I am not a fisherman! See? He even admitted himself. <laughs> That's not what I meant! <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it for the bird, guys. Prosecutor, you have something that will put this arrogant falcon in his place, don't you? I must concede. You concede? On this point at least, Falcon's evidence strongly suggests that the key component of Monsieur Kingley's testimony is false. Ah! No! 
This doesn't mean that the Prince Juan is innocent, of course. All Falcon has demonstrated is that this particular witness is unreliable. But I did see something. I really, really did. I did saw the pooty cat. <laughs> Alright, so maybe I didn't exactly see a shifty looking fox. I made that part of the story up. But I did see a swan lurking around the south entrance on the morning of the murder. Come again? A swan? Do shut up, witness. Your word is mud at this point. How can we possibly trust anything you have to say? Uh, uh, Your Honor, Judge Romulus, we're out of time. We're ten minutes overdue to the start of the hair versus Torah <laughs> Tortoise trial. Is that the late of ready? Curses. I was hoping we could have. I was hoping we could have the case wrapped up in a single trial session. It is a shame, but ultimately an accurate sentencing is always preferable to a speedy sentencing. Yes, alright. I don't need to hear your moralizing, you piece of prosecutor. Court will resume this Friday, the 21st of January, at 9 o'clock. Don't be late. Prosecutor, do your damn job. Get this stupid fox a conviction already. Out of my sights. I will do my best to ensure that justice is served, Your Honor. A lot came up in that trial, huh? Yeah, no doubt about that. But something's been bothering me. Why would that fisherman guy, Monsieur Kingley, lie on the witness stand? He was being coerced? Well, maybe it's a possibility that he was coerced or bribed even? That's just what I was thinking. Maybe the real murderer threatened the fisherman into making up a story about Prince Juan. Let's keep an open mind. Anything is possible at this stage. But to be perfectly honest, something else has been bothering me about the trial. Of course, this is this, this right here. Judge Romulus, he's acting without a shred of professionalism. He's obviously more interested in securing a guilty verdict than he is in discovering the truth. But why? Maybe he has a vendetta against Spanish royalty? I'm not so sure. There must be something else at work here. Excuse me? Um, excuse me, Monsieur Falcon? Sorry to bother you, but uh, this letter just arrived. I think it's for you. A letter for me? I wonder why it wasn't sent to my office. Have you been demoted to courier service, Rupert? <laughs> oh, hush, hush, Spiration. I don't need to be uh, pitied by a first year dropout. Oh, damn. Ooh, good comeback. <laughs> so, what does it say, Falcon? It's. It's a threat. A threat made with cut out newspaper letters. Oh, pray. Let me prepare my throat. Whoa! I didn't know those things actually existed. Let me see. Falcon! Stop your investigation! Or there will be consequences! Okay, give me a second. I don't think... I don't think it has a unique voice, you know that, right? I know, it's but it, 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 it remind me of that um, Spongebob meme, that's why. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, no, I get it, I get it, I get it. Yeah. Scary. There's no question that this letter originated from Major Hull's murderer. He, or she, must be aware that we are getting close to uncovering the truth. Sounds about right. But why would a person write with cut out newspaper letters like this? Masking one's handwriting would be the most common reason. Although, I can't help but wonder why they would bother since we don't have any handwriting samples to compare it to. We're still going ahead with our investigation though, right? Oh, absolutely! If a lawyer were deterred every time they received a threatening letter, 
they would never get any work done, especially if you live out here, fam. Besides, with only three days before the next trial session, we can't afford to be worrying about petty things like this. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow, you're right. Let's make those days count. Of course. Okay, let's hit the road. Um, things have changed, as you've noticed. So yeah, because I didn't get to say my shit about you. Exactly. You know, about justice and shit. Exactly. All right. Now I can finally go here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome to Langer Hagel Slacks Chocolate Emporia, the finest Belgian chocolate shop in all of Paris. His voice is deeper than that. I am Langer. Very deep. Very deep, but I can't. Wait, wait, wait. maybe I can. <clears throat> I am Langer. Yeah, I am Langer Hagel Slack, the founder and owner of this fine establishment. And I am JJ Falcon, defense attorney. Good day, Monsieur. Oh, lawyers, very fancy. I must say that I once dreamed of being a lawyer, but, well, circumstances wouldn't allow it. It's a funny story. You see, when I was a young boy, I befriended the son of a Hungarian attorney. Falcon, you have to help me. What is it? It's a smell, Falcon. It's overpowering me. It's demanding that I lay waste to the shop. Oh, for pity's sake, restrain yourself, Sparrowson. Oh, but I'm rambling, aren't I? So, are you messieurs here to buy some chocolate? Yes, yes. Sparrowson. Oh, no, 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 no. We're actually here on business, Monsieur. Business? First things first. We believe that this chocolate wrapper originated from your shop. Are they correct? Oh yes, yes! That is indeed the trademark Hagelslack wrapper for genuine Belgian Hagelslack chocolate. This was almost certainly bought from this very establishment. Very good. With that established, there is something we wish to ask, Monsieur Hagelslack. Um, no. Yeah. Can you tell us who bought the chocolate that was contained in this wrapper, Monsieur Hagelslack? Oh, I'm afraid not, Messieurs. Not just because of matters of confidentiality, although that is a factor you understand, but I cannot, I couldn't possibly know that. I thought elephants never forget. <laughs> My memory is impeccable, Monsieur, but you must understand that I have dozen customers a day. There are hundreds of people who could have potentially bought this particular item. Hmm. So your memory is good, but you need further information. If we were to a if we were to give you the description and the name of a person, would you be able to tell us whether they purchased something from you? Oh yes, yes, that I could probably do, Monsieur. Hmm, let me think. To ask about things have changed, and of course my confidence have changed. Let's start with this guy. Have you ever served a hairy wolf in judicial clothes named George Romulus? Yes, Monsieur. All right. Have you ever served... Wait. Did you just say yes? Yes, Monsieur. A wolf in judicial robes? I did serve a person like that a little while ago. On the 6th of January, to be precise. Oh my gosh, your, your memory is great. Did, did he say or do anything suspicious? Not that I can recall, Monsieur. He was a pleasant fellow. Big toothy grin. 
bought 200 grams of dark a classic dark belgian chocolate with a custom filling dark belgian chocolate this reminds me of something you guys teased me about some years back a custom dark belgian chocolate belgian chocolate it reminds me of something a custom filling well, some type of caramel he provided it himself although he unfortunately did not bring enough for me to sample <laughs> what does this mean fuck well we shouldn't make assumptions um it may just mean that this judge like to eat chocolate but if the judge's purchase is related to the rapper at the crime scene then Monsieur Hagoslack, do you think I could get a copy of Judge Ramalas's receipt? I can do I can do you one better, Monsieur. I have the original right here. I keep them for tax purposes, you understand? Is it okay for taking, Monsieur? Oh, absolutely. Memorizing receipts contents is trivial for me after all. I am an ele elephant. <laughs> Great. Would you look at this thing? Judge Ramalus signed it in green ink. Green ink? I knew Judge Ramalus is sh was shady, but only truly villainous people write it green. Really? That's a racist. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time, Monsieur Hagoslack. You have been enormously helpful. I am glad to be of service. I wish you the best of luck with your case, Messieurs. Wonderful. Another day. Alright. Um where else to go now? I have these places to go in a bus. Where to? That's the thing. Alright, let's just go here. Why I don't know. Are we gonna play some cards until we're flat or broke? I could, but I leave that for off stream purposes. Uh, or maybe I could do a one card. What do you think? No, no. I have no time for this. You're right. We have a fox to save. We're ready to hit the road. Yep, let's go. Let's hit the road. Thursday. Ah, this thing. Oh, where he poisons himself. I think we can skip this part, yeah? Yeah. Uh, it's, for those of you who are not familiar, it's already in the first episode 3. It's also on YouTube, so you can check that part out. So we're just skipping here. Idiot. Oh, it's very sick. I still don't know how to voice this dude, though. Very um, flamboyant, I must say, but I don't know how to thing in here. This is also in episode 3, folks, so you can read this, watch this in the YouTube video. Choka! Out of war. Things like these. Things like these, I wish I did some French, but hey. I didn't do French in school, folks. Alright, court time. Shout out to all four viewers. Five on red. Oh, five, red. Shout out to the five on Kaiser's stream. No, it's not on my stream. Oh, oh, Zim, Zim, Zim. I've seen five viewers on your end. Oh, Zim. Okay. We're skipping here. I want to that. <laughs> Alright, we're going to have to voice this. Man. Still call it mm -hmm. Fisherman. <laughs> it's nine o'clock. I believe it's time for the roll call. Is the defense not present? Such unprofessionalism. 
If there is no defense, then this trial cannot proceed any further. We must make a ruling based on the evidence that was already that has already been presented. I will now converse with the jury. We shall decide whether Prince Juan is guilty of murdering Major Howell and of conspiring to murder the king. Um, Your Honor, may I have a word? Fine, but make it quick. I have people to execute. I'm a firm believer that the trial must be orderly and punctual. There is no room for wishy-washy dilly-dally. But it seems somewhat rash to end the trial session the moment it is due to start. Perhaps it would be prudent to wait five or ten minutes in case the defense is just a little tardy. Then the child still has a chance to proceed and justice will be served. You are the prosecution, are you not? You have nothing to worry about. A guilty verdict is all but guaranteed. Your Honor, you appear confused. I'm not here to secure a guilty verdict. Of course you are. You are a prosecutor. By definition, you're here to prosecute. Duh. No. My job description is to, pro is to prosecute, but I am here in this courtroom to ensure that justice is served. An unfair and unbalanced trial is not in the spirit of justice. That's very noble of you. But if the defense is absent, then there is little that can be done. I'll hear no more of this matter. I will now talk with the jury. Objection. The the defense is present. <laughs> Your Honor, I need to exercise. <sighs> You're too late, Falcon. Mon dear JJ, you look like a total mess. You take a morning swim in the sea or something. S something like that. Your Honor, we are all present. We are all, we are only three minutes over schedule. That's not needless to dirty the pure man, the pure name of justice. Rules are rules, prosecutor. Falcon clearly has no respect for the legal procedure. Frankly, for turning up while looking like a drowned rat, I ought to hold him in contempt of court. Your Honor, Whee! But your honor. Rules are rules. One more word out of either of you, and I shall have both of you despaired. Mm -hmm. <sighs> it's a pity. The king king of France was most looking forward to standing behind the witness podium. The the King of France? He's here? Oh, are we not having a trial after all? That's a pity. Uh, y your Majesty. Oh, what a surprise. Yeah, well, you see. You know, this is my seventh time testifying against a would-be assassin. But it's the first time seeing a trial where the case has ended before it even began. Well, the defense, uh, he was late and, uh, oh, pish posh. France didn't become a great and dignified kingdom through rigorous punctuality. Let's go ahead with this trial. It'll be fun. Look, I'll even set the odds to get us started. I swear to speak without hatred and without fear. To tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Did I get it right? That was perfect, Your Majesty. JJ, I trust you have no objections with the king testifying. Oh, no, no, no. No objections here. Go ahead, going ahead with the trial is fine with me. And surely you wouldn't stand in the way of the king, would you, Your Honor? 
God, fine. Proceed with this cursed trial. Excellent. Now, Your Majesty, could you tell us your activities on the day of the murder? My activities? Well, I started the day with tea and toast, as I normally do. I was just in my pages at the time, and... I think you can skip ahead a little, perhaps, to your arrival at the Lavoie. Ah, right, of course. Well, my entourage and I entered the Lavoie south entrance around 9 o'clock. We passed through the Sayer du Tibre with little fanfare. At the Grand... At the Grand Galier, I unveiled a new painting and gave a short speech to in- inspire the citizens who attended. That's when I was approached by a man claiming to be the Prince of Spain. He presented a rose which was taken by Major Howell, and, well, I think you know the rest. Indeed we do, Your Majesty. Madams and Messieurs of the Court, what we have here is another testimony that establishes Prince Juan's guilt. And this is no ordinary testimony. It is, it is the testimony of perhaps the most trustworthy man in all of France. Oh, you flatter me, prosecutor. But I am the most trustworthiest in all the kingdom, aren't I? <laughs> oh, I have no doubts, your majesty. Nonetheless, I would like to perform a cross-examination. How dare you doubt your king? The utter nerve. Oh, calm yourself, judge. I have no qualms with standard legal procedure. Defense, please proceed. I want to see your best courtroom drama material. Okay, he wants some drama. Let's go. Let's start with... Let's start with this. Your Majesty. You say that you passed through the Sae du Tibre uneventfully? Oh, indeed! We stop briefly to look at the paintings and then move to the Grand Galier. Hmm. Uh. Sound of Tibre. Could you elaborate? What did you see in the Sae du Tibre? What did I see? Well,. Um, Roman stuff, mostly. Oh, no, no, no. I meant aside from the Roman artifacts. For example, did you talk to someone in the room who wasn't a member of your entourage? They're they're reaching, JJ. The king already testified that he he passed through without encountering anything of interest. Um, on the contrary, Rooster, I have reason to believe that this was a key moment on the day of the murder. I want the king to elaborate on exactly what and who he saw. Shut shut up. And I suppose that you will have to proceed, your majesty. Alright, let me think. So there was that giant doorstop. And there was that upper copper urn urn thing. Oh, there was something else now that you ask. I was offered a box of chocolates by some peasant mademoiselle. I don't have much of a sweet tooth, but Major Hall was keen to accept our chocolate or two on my behalf. Nani? Hmm? Did I say something startling, prosecutor? Uh, no. Please, continue, Your Majesty. I think the prosecution is startled because he just came to the realization that I was not spouting drivel in the previous trial session. Well, that's debatable. Dead. To cut a long story short, Your Majesty, this mademoiselle may hold some revel- re- relevance to the case at hand. Could you describe her? Really? She's relevant? But she's a pet? Okay. Well, <laughs> let me think. 
I didn't get a good look at her face, but she was a sorry looking swan, probably in her late teens or early twenties. A young sorry looking swan, you say? I don't suppose her name was... Mademoiselle Sing. Mademoiselle Sing? Sing? That sounds familiar. Why yes, I think that was it. Yes, of course. She was called Mademoiselle Sing. I see. <coughs> this is undoubtedly significant. Mademoiselle Singh gave chocolates to Major Howell minutes before he died. Now just one minute. I see what you're alluding to, JJ. You're suggesting that the gifted chocolates killed the Major. But that line of reasoning holds no weight because the evidence is circumstantial. Circumstantial, my tail feathers! The king just just the king just testified that Major Howell ate chocolates. Yes, that much that much is no longer in dispute. But still, you still have not proven that the chocolates were poisoned. Unless, without that, we must assume that the Swan was merely offering a gift rather than speculating that she's a murderer. Yes, yes. Shame on you, defense, implicating a poor, innocent girl like that. Utterly disgusting. Why are to end this trial and hang you? Uh, hold on. I do have evidence that the chocolate was, in fact, poisoned. I don't believe you, JJ. If you had a piece of evidence that significant, you would have slammed it down already. Present it. Well, I can't. It's not really the evidence for the type of evidence. Why am I not surprised? Uh, <laughs> the, the drama was just getting good. Why did you all suddenly go quiet? Well, your majesty, it appears that the defense just had a realization of his own. That it, that is, that he lacks the evidence to support his theory. Since he cannot continue with his argument, I believe the cross-examination has to come to an end. But I'm Objection. not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Beat me to it. Ah, let me present my evidence. See, I had a chocolate wrapper back in my office, and Sparrison ate it. Stop, JJ. Stop. While you still have a little dignity. The results of whatever crackpot pseudo-scientific experiment you perform do not constitute valid evidence. I think this trial is over, Your Honor. About bloody time. You may take your leave, Your Majesty. Very well. I am pleased to see that justice has been thoroughly served. Until the next assassination attempt. Adieu, messieurs. This man is just living for assassinations. I will now deliberate with the jury. Objection! Sorry. I've always wanted to do that. Sparrison, my, my man, my, my ace attorney. Sparrison, are you okay? Yep, the doctor said that I, have, that I have an iron stomach. Most of the poison passed straight through me. Speaking of which, I would like to testify on, what, on that poison chocolate issue. I even got a doctor's note, see? It's too late. The trial is over. You can't be serious, yeah. The contents of that note could turn the entire trail on its head. You must allow it. Why are you constantly arguing with me? I thought the job of a public prosecutor was to assist the judges. I told you, Your Honor, my job isn't to get a guilty verdict. It is to ensure 
that justice is served. I swear, you are the worst prosecutor in all of France. Yada yada. Go ahead, Spiderson. Read the contents of the note for the court to hear. We got this in the bag. Ahem. This patient, Sparrison, was submitted to Oh my gosh. Salpetriere Hospital. Where he was displayed a where he displayed a variety of symptoms. These included profuse sweating, a rapid fever, and severe nausea. The patient was diagnosed with poisoning, probably originating from the plant known as aconite, aka monk shoot, aka wolf's bane. When we questioned the patient, he admitted to having consumed a discarded chocolate wrapper, potentially carrying the poison. We, after calling him an idiot and examining the contents of the patient's stomach, we confirmed that this is true. As a mental health professional, I believe this patient to be clinically ill, but let's keep that bit. Uh, yada yada yada. Ah, here we go. Signed, Dr. Fallere. Thank you, Sparrison. I don't think I'll even need to question you. Between your note and the King's testimony, every angle of chocolate wrapper business has been covered. Awesome. Wait, did you say the King was here? You can get his autograph later. Right, of course. So, what happens now? Do I get cross-examined by the prosecution or something? Uh, to be honest, I see little to cross-examine. Do your damn job, prosecutor! Examine the... Examine the bamba clap bird! <laughs> your Honor, he had a note signed by a medical professional definitively proving that the chocolate wrapper from the crime scene was poisoned. We could nitpick the details or delve into the doctor's credentials, but I fear it would be a waste of the court's time. Nobody wants that. Gah! So then, what the hell do we do now? We do nothing, Your Honor. This poison wrapper has introduced an element of doubt into the case. The prosecution must accept that. But is the level of doubt reasonable? It is significant. I think the member of the jury will agree. JJ's evidence is still tenuous. Tenuous. A step above circumstantial. You have you have proven a link, a not wholly illogical link, but you haven't proven proved beyond a doubt that Major Hall was killed by the chocolate. You are still making far too many assumptions. Where, where is the em empiricism. empiricism? Empiricism that is required by a good, a good, any good court of law, where the witnesses can back you, back up your claims. Damn bird. Oh, I brought along a witness. Maybe she can help. Ooh la la. Scene. Um, anybody has a female voice? Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Or I'm not willing to try. I should oh, say. Hold up. Let me get this nitrogen. <laughs> Suck up that nitrogen. <coughs> Spiderson, it's great to see you on your feet and you have been an enormous asset to this case. But what are you trying to pull off now? Surprise witness! Surprise witness! Surprise witness! Yeah! I remember you mentioning the Kokoriko by calling surprise witnesses, so I thought we would beat him at his own game. I brought the flora girl, Mademoiselle Singh so that she can testify about Prince Juan's character. 
You're putting me in a difficult position, Sparrison. Just moments before you arrive, we, the court, establish that Mademoiselle Singh is a possible suspect for this case. What? That can't be right. Sparrows, no. <clears throat> Sparrison, it's okay. Monsieur Falcon, I would like to testify. You want to testify? Do you understand what you are agreeing to? I do. I have accepted my fate. Prosecutor, do you have any ob do you have any objections to me calling upon Mademoiselle Singh as a witness? No, none. Bearing in mind, of course, that you are here to defend Prince Juan. <laughs> Not to convict Mademoiselle Singh. Prosecuting is my job. Of course. I have no objections either. Please proceed, witness. Speak the oath. The oath? Say that you swear to speak without hatred and without fear. To tell the whole truth and not, nothing but the truth. Um, I swear, Your Honor, to speak without hatred and without fear, to, take, to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Good. Very good. Please, state your name and occupation for the court record. My name is Catherine Marie Singh, and I'm a flower seller, and I'm about 20 years old, with a weird voice. Mademoiselle Singh, tell the courtroom of your activities on the morning of January, of the 7th of January. Very well. Hold on. I saw the king and his entourage enter the Louvois around 9 o'clock. I followed. When they came to a stop in the Sahel de Tibre, I stepped forward and offered the king a chocolate. He refused. But a guard, a big dog by the name of Major Han, was happy to oblige. The guard died because I, personally, had previously added poison to the chocolate. What? You're joking. That can't be right. I use poison derived from monkshood, a notoriously dangerous plant. As a flower seller, it was simple to acquire. Why did you do it, mademoiselle? Why? Why? Monsieur, people have tried to kill the king before, and people will try again. It's simple logic. He is a vile man who has no respect or love for the people who suffer under him. I did it to better the French people. I don't believe that at all. Falcon, say something. Mademoiselle, are you being coerced or threatened? Speak freely. No, Monsieur. I'm confessing out of my own volition. It is my guilt, and nobody else's. <sighs> I don't even know if I want this favor, to be honest. Truly. Well, defense, it seems like you wormed a confession out of this murderous pute. I need to look at that up. I suppose that gets your client, Prince Juan, freely off the hook. Lucky you. So, shall we wrap this court session up? Ugh. This, is an, uh, this question is based on morality. <laughs> Something is clearly wrong here. Very. So, no. We push forward. <laughs> no, not yet. I have further questions for the witness, Your Honor. Further questions? To what end? 
You've already proved their client's innocence. I wish to uncover the truth. You aren't here to uncover the truth. You're here to defend Prince Juan, and you've done that job with a disgusting level of diligence. Nonetheless, I believe the madam I believe the mademoiselle has omitted something of huge importance. I wish to question her further. Something of huge importance? I won't allow it. Fine. Can I at least show something to the witness? You and that prosecutor are a right pair of moralizing blowhards, aren't you? You are doing my heading. Fine. If it will shut you up, I will let you show one magical mystery item to the witness. I can't imagine you have anything up your sleeve to change the flow of this trial, though. Monsieur Falcon, save it. I have nothing more to say. Oh, but I think you'll be swanning right now. I, d I don't know how they sound together. Hmm. I'll use these. Please, take a look at these, mademoiselle. Train ticket stops. Look at the names. Hmm. <gasps> Papa and Mama. In Vienna? Really? Are they really safe? That they are. The tickets were arranged courtesy of the fox. Then, that means the wolf has nothing to hold over me. I, I can speak freely. I can fight. Fight. Indeed. Go ahead, mademoiselle. What are you two muttering about down there? I'm amending my testimony, your honor. Members of the court. Everything I've said today has been the truth. I did go to Lerofo on the 7th of January. I did present a box of poisoned chocolates to the king. Except it was not of my volition. I was threatened. I was forced to carry out the task under the threat of harm. You see, my family has been struggling to get by. The winter has been harsh, and my flower business has been struggling. Well, no. mm -hmm. One day, a man approached me, a man I assumed to be kind-hearted. This man offered me 200 francs to get us through the cold. But I could not afford to repay the debt. When I, had, when I attempted the bargain with the man, he offered me a deal. Assist him with murder, and he would drop all debts, refuse, and he would ruin me and my parents. I obliged, because the alternative meant death for those I love, and I am but a simple swan. The name of the man who did this was... Judge Romulus. <laughs> what a creative story. This is a, obviously a last minute, desperate attempt at passing the buck. The sheer laziness of this girl to accuse a man she's never met before. She's blatantly floundering. Indeed. I've heard dozens of these self pity yarns during my time as a prosecutor. Although. Admittedly, this is the first time I've ever seen a witness directly accuse a judge. Quite a brazen gambit. But in any case, these sorts of stories never turn out to be true. They are always proven to be fabrications born of desperation. I've never been more honest, Monsieur. Listen, Mademoiselle Singh, I would like to believe your story. But accusing a man, a judge no less, of conspiring to murder the king is a hugely serious accusation. Do you have any proof to support your story? Proof? You say the judge lent you money. Then you both must have signed a contract when you made the transaction. 
That contract would suffice as proof. The, the, the contracts were all verbal. He, he said the money was a gift at first. And only later he said that I had to repay him. People, learn this lesson from now. Whatever transaction you get yourself into, let it be a written contract. That's food for thoughts. <laughs> How convenient. Of course, this supposed let contract doesn't even exist. <laughs> the mademoiselle has no proof because her story is a blatant lie. Falcon, you have to do something. Do we have anything to link Judge Romulus to Mademoiselle C? Link? Ah, of course. Members of the court, I know for certain that the Mademoiselle story is true. I can say with certainty that Judge Romulus has made contact with Mademoiselle in the past. I know this because at this very moment, I am holding a key piece of evidence that links Judge Romulus directly to the crime scene. And that evidence is... Ha-ha! I think you should take a look at this, Severin. You don't trust it in the judge's hands. What? What is that? What does that piece of paper say? This is the receipt. Of chocolates from Landa Hagelslax Chocolate Emporium on the 6th of January, made out to to a man named Romulus. Aha! The writing upon the receipt is clear. A man named Romulus bought chocolates on the day before the murder. Those chocolates happen to have been of the same brand and flavor as the ones that were used in the royal assassination attempt. By itself, this evidence would not be definitive. It would only suggest that the judge has something of a sweet tooth. But taken in conjunction with the mademoiselle's updated testimony, that would imply that the judge was directly involved the assassination attempt that you are correct kakariko judge romulus do you have anything to say about this yep that receipt's not mine i haven't stepped foot in a chocolate shop in years you cannot be serious the receipt is indisputable proof of your purchase indisputable watch me dispute it what you have there is a scrap of paper with the word Romulus scrawled on it. Is it a forgery? Are there simply two men named Romulus living in Paris? I don't have a clue. But what I do know is that you have nothing, nothing to prove that I was the one who signed that receipt. Ugh, this is absurd. Do you want me to dig up court documents with your signature so we can undertake a writing analysis? That wouldn't be possible. I believe his honor uses a rubber stamp for signing off on an unofficial document. Rubber stamp. Court document. <laughs> that would be correct. <laughs> yeah, boy. Well, tis no matter. I do not need a judge's signature. I already have in my possession proof of the, that the signature on the receipt belongs to Judge Romulus. Phoenix Wright, activate. Okay. Let's go. Take that. Oh, but first things first. I believe you dropped your pen, Your Honor. Hmm? Oh, yeah, that's mine. Thanks. I've been looking for that thing everywhere. I thought as much. <laughs> Dug your own grave. Madames and messieurs, last night I was assaulted outside Salpetia Hospital. I did not see the assailant's face, but I did accidentally grab something from the garments as I was thrown into the same. Oh, 
Oh, so that's why you smell of fish. I wanted to say something, but I thought it might be rude. Sparrowson, shush. This fountain pen is the very item I grabbed. D did I say that pen was mine? <laughs> On closer inspection, I see I must have been mistaken. Save it, Your Honor. I'm not here to press assault charges. What interests me more, most about this pen is the ink it contains. It is emerald green in color. And as we all know, only baddies write in green. That's racist. <laughs> well, yes. <clears throat> but more importantly, it's a rare and usual choice of ink color. I would venture that only a dozen people in all of Paris are arrogant enough to write in green. And I would venture that only one of those arrogant people is named Slapsdesk Romulus. So Jack Romulus lacks respect for classic penmanship. What of it? Take another look at the chocolate receipt, Severin. That receipt it was signed... Faha! With emerald green ink. This is certainly quite a coincidence. None. There is no more room for coincidence. There is no more doubt. There is only one narrative that can tie this ridiculous string of evidence together. On the 6th of January, you, Judge Romulus, bought a box of chocolates with a custom filling. That custom filling contained poison, originating from the flowers of Mademoiselle Singh, a street seller you owe, who owed you a debt. Ahem, but on the 7th of January, you, Judge Romulus, leveraged that debt to force the girl to present the poison chocolates to the king. Then, an idiot by the name by a man by an idiot of a man by the name of Juan framed himself as the murderer in an order to take the fall in Mademoiselle Singh's stead. You push for that one's guilt by priming a witness, Monsieur Toussaint Kingly. And when that failed, you pressured Mademoiselle Singh to take full responsibility for that crime. I do say that is the only narrative that made sense. Admit it, you fraud. Fine, I do admit it. I did it. I purchased the chocolate. I added the poison. I put a peasant girl in dead just so I could force her to take the fall. <sighs> I was the only one. I was the one who wanted the king murdered. But there's not a damn thing you can do or say about it. I am the one who holds the gavel. I am the one who passes the sentences. With a snap of the fingers, I could have each and every one of you guillotined at the Place de Astelis before nightfall. Who judges the judges? Who stands about me? Nobody. Nobody. Not even God can condemn me when I sit so highly. I am a judge. Attempted to murder king. Corrupting the court as, as I see. What an utterly repulsive individual. Don't touch me, you dirty pig. You have no authority oh, over thee. He doesn't. I do. Take him away, Inspector. I'm not done. I'm not done with any of you. You're all guilty. You'll see. A revolution is coming. The rebels will over overrun Paris. The king and the government will fall. The bourgeoisies will be slaughtered. <laughs> and we will soon have a glorious second republic. A republic free of class. <laughs> Where everyone is free and equal. <laughs> I said don't touch me. <laughs> Just another romantic lunatic, your majesty. Ignore him. Of course. Carry on, Inspector. I'm used to this by now. <clears throat> well then. Hmm. But 
What happens now? Uh, um, I, I guess I'm supposed to take over the president, the president judge's duties. <clears throat> well, given the surprising series of revelations that just took place, instead of in also a breakdown, we believe that the results are clear. We find the defendants. Prince Juan Credido to be cleared of all charges. We therefore find the defendants not guilty. Hooray! Well done, well done, guys. Well done. What? What happens to me now? Mademoiselle, it is clear that you are coerced. However, you still play a significant role in the king's assassination attempt. By all right, you must be tried for your crimes. I see. I cannot argue. But, as it happens, due process will not, will not, was not followed during the trial session. Judge Ramulus thoroughly dispute, disrupted the proceedings. Consequently, I believe that most of the testimonies given during this trial session would not be seen as a valid as valid in a court of law. What does this mean? I'm just a simple flower girl. He's saying you're free to go. Correct. As a prosecutor, I see no crime to prosecute. Monsieur, I could hug you. And thank you, Messieurs. Without your help and assurances, I don't know where I would be right now. So, are my parents really in Vienna? I think so, but you would have to ask a fox for details. I don't know exactly what he arranged. He's a sly fox, after all. Although, now that John Romulus poses no threat, I suppose their parents will be free to move back to Paris. Actually, I may follow them to Vienna. You need a holiday after all this drama? I don't blame you, girl. Well, yes. But I also want to get away from here before, you know, before the fighting starts. You mean the revolution Judge Romulus mentioned? He doesn't seem mentally stable. Pay him no mind. It's not just him, Monsieur. In the streets, everyone talk, no talks about an uprising. If you are smart, you will, be cl you will clear out of here too. Thanks for the concern, Mademoiselle. But we're far from smart, so we're staying put. <laughs> Yes, person. Put him again. Facts. Mm, I see. Well, good luck, messieurs. And farewell. Maybe we can meet again when this has all blown over. Ta-ta. Wait, mademoiselle. Don't you want to have a quick celebratory drink? Oh, she's gone. So, I guess it's just you, me, and the fox. Right, Falcon? That sounds good, Sparrowson. Take Prince Juan back to the Avery office. I need to sort out some paperwork with Severin. Okie dokie. Ta ta. I suppose the congratulations are in order. Uncovering the truth in a way that you did. It was quite a feat. Everything went far better than I could have hoped. But you surprised me at the end with that little lie of yours. Lie? <clears throat> this trial's testimonies are completely invalid. Bullock. Bullcock. That's too, bullcock. Too. <laughs> bullcock, to be specific. You and I both know that this trial has produced ample valid evidence from Mademoiselle Singh to be detained and tried. Even when the coercion accounted for... I bet she will still be found guilty 
form of conspiracy or accessory to murder, you know this, Severin. So, why are you holding back? Hmm. You know, ten. Maybe even five years ago, I probably would have persecuted Mademoiselle Singh. I was too fresh out of law school. I thought my role as a prosecutor was to condemn every potential criminal that came my way. I thought if a guilty person ends up behind bars or on a hanging dock, then justice has been served. But as I gained experience, I started noticing the details. The details? Extenuating circumstances. The personal considerations. The gaps in the law where even when due process is followed to the letter, good people are punished and wrongdoers walk free. For example, episode one. I hated it. I changed my role. I decided that I should not strive to secure a guilty verdict, but to ensure that justice is served. I could prosecute Mademoiselle Singh and she would definitely be convicted. But that would not serve justice. Severin. You're going soft, Sylvain. I suppose I am. Try not to grow too bitter, Falcon. It doesn't suit you. I must congratulate you, Senor Falcon and Senor Sparrison. Hey, what am I still doing? Use still using this old accent? I, of course, meant congratulations, Monsieur Falcon and Monsieur Sparrowson. Just no big deal. We were just doing our jobs. Oh, no, no. Your job ended when you proved my innocence. Everything after that was you going above and beyond your duties. Of course, I was counting on you to do so. Unless a lawyer would surely have stumbled or caved in. Oh, but I forget. Here's your money. Thank you, Monsieur Volpes. This has been a strange case, but I'm glad the truth came to light. I'll see you out. Wait! Monsieur Volpes, before you go, there's something... something's been bothering me. Why did you come to us in the first place? Surely there are much more reputable lawyers out there who could have done a better job. Oh, more reputable than the Falcon that stands before me? Uh, yeah. Falcon's got a sucky track record. I had to hang you. True, he does have a mixed record. But his family name is hugely respected in the lawyer world. I chose Monsieur Falcon as my lawyer for that reason alone. Huh? Really? I've never heard of another lawyer named Falcon. Let's not go this road, Monsieur Volpix. I don't go by my old name for a reason. That is fair. We shouldn't be fixated on the past, should we? After all, it's already been done and gone. The future is where our potential lies. That's what we should be paying attention to. A storm is approaching fast. You mean revolution that the crooked judge mentioned? Oh, indeed. I dare say that the wolf is right. A rebellion is coming. One way or the other. Listen, Monsieur Falcon. You'll probably have a surge of work over the coming days. If you want me to dig up dirt on anyone, please feel free to drop by my office at any time. Dig up the dirt. I am a private investigator after all. It's what I do. Just bear it in mind. Thank you, Monsieur Volpix. Good day, messieurs. Ah, I'm going to get a drink. 
Seriously, Falcon? You just got paid. What? I was going to ask you if you wanted tea or coffee. <laughs> lies, lies. Mm -hmm. And so closeth this act. Um, it's 8.10. I don't know. Do you want to continue or we we'll go back to our regularly scheduled program? Uh, let's go back to regularly scheduled. Alrighty. That being said, everyone, thanks to all who joined the stream. Um, this has been episode three with a twist. I'm quite sure you all have noticed the, you know, the subtle changes and the explicit changes. That being said, Aviary Attorney will resume on Mondays and Wednesdays is whatever, literally whatever. So thanks as always to Living Kaiser for voicing Severin and Valerte and possibly any other chickens that come along the way. Of course. That being said, guys, take it easy. It's raining in JA, so to my JA folks, stay warm, stay safe. And we'll see you again on the next time. Peace in the Middle East. Take care, everyone. Peace.